fading out there is the national team Arambe Stars players, of course, from Paul Were, Masood Juma, and uh, goalkeeper Patrick Matasi speaking to FKF media ahead of the Continental Shop East African Cup of Nations kicking off in a few days from now uh, as we speak. Of course, it will be taking place in Egypt. Uh, 24 teams uh, participating for the first time expansion, of course, happening and joining me to review the state of you know Kenyan football with regards to National Super League run coming to an end tomorrow with various fixtures. Three teams looking forward to be crowned champion and get promoted to KPL Premier League. Ian Waga, the social nerd, has been here. Barry Silla, a robust journalist, and also Robert Maebo co-host, is still with us. Starting with you, Ian Waga, listening to players speaking ahead of the continental showpiece. They are all boy and very optimistic of performing, and some of them getting quoted saying that they wouldn't underrate the likes of Senegal and Algeria, of course, our group mates. What do you make of their performance? Um, Anticipated performance, of course. Um, uh, I think uh, it will be yeah, it will be a lie if we say that we are we stand. Uh, Just raise up your mic. I, I think it will be a, a, a lie if you would have said uh, that Kenya is has a high opportunity of getting out of the group because, uh, in my opinion, it's one of the groups of death. So uh, I think the boys are doing very well in terms of being confident about it. And uh, I know it will be tough, but it is football. Any any team can can prosper at the end of the day. I remember speaking to FKF communications manager Barry uh, Otieno and he told me that just like there were upsets during FIFA World Cup and even Euro Cup, the likes of Iceland, you know, pulling surprises against the heavyweights England, the same thing can happen in AFCON and Kenya can perform contrary to people's expectations. True or false? Uh, just like Ian has said, I think uh, the element of confidence is very important. So whether you are ranked lower or whatever, if, if your players, if you build confidence, if the coaches uh, tell the players you, you, you can do it, then they are able to put it in their head uh, that you can do it. Remember now this football or any other sports, it's all about the mental ability. If you, if you can believe in yourself, then even Arambestas can go far. So I believe uh, that Arambestas, if they, they are confident enough, if they play according to tactics, then they can pull uh, a surprise. Yes. Yeah, Luang, of course you are on this particular show, but this particular time you are speaking from partiality, sort of, <laughs> you know, because you support Kisumu Ulsters who are chasing for a KPL uh, promotion uh, crown, because they will be playing their last class against Thika United tomorrow at Thika Municipal. Thika United, as we speak, they have been relegated alongside Green Commandos of Kakamega and Migori Youth. But what do you make of, you know, the competition in terms of NSL? Uh, first of all, I think uh, just uh, to go from the beginning, I think uh, this is the best thing that has ha ever happened to Kisumu Town in a while. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's the first time we are seeing uh, a community club. It's boys you see around Kisumu, boys you know, and they've come up and uh, put up this amazing run. And now they're only one, one game away from winning it all. So uh, what I would like to say is uh, Kisumu in terms of talent alone in the national super league we've seen some splendid displays they have one of the tightest defenses in the league i think they are just behind ushuru in terms of goals conceded uh, they had the most they had the top goal scorer before he was snatched away now they have other players coming in and we have to put it into context that this is a, this is a team that is only ha, has an average age of 22 years so i think it's an amazing thing that kisumu has done and uh, the county as well so I'm looking forward to tomorrow winning it. I hope Wazito and Nairobi's team are drop points, and it will be a wonderful culmination. Barry, you've covered uh, Kenyan football, especially National Super League, for a while. What yeah. do you make of the competition and in terms of culmination into tomorrow's clashes? Of course, both of all of them happening at the same time to determine who a winner will be and get promoted to NSL amongst uh, Nairobi steamer sitting third on the log mm -hmm. and Kisumu All Stars on the second, then Wazito occupying the top spot. How has it been? I think for me, uh, based on my assessment over the years, I've covered the National Super League. This has been the tightest season so far. And uh, many stakeholders are saying uh, uh, maybe the top league KPL should, should, should be as competitive as this. And it's because uh, for me, uh, what, what some of, uh, like Ian is saying, the talent there is very ripe and uh, players are raw, there's raw talent down there. But also we have very good quality tacticians coming up and they're very young and, uh, and ambitious and they're building good teams. Even the teams at the basement, they are very good, uh, good uh, players uh, that have shown what they can do. And now I understand they're like two or three now in the Chan, uh, two or three players from the 
of, from the Super League that are in the Chan, way before this was unheard of. So I think uh, when you look at the top, even the, the, the top table between number one and four, the, the difference is only what eight points, and between number one and three, the difference is one point. So it will be interesting to see how tomorrow plays out, especially because uh, uh, the, the, all the top three teams are playing uh, teams that have nothing to lose. Uh, the leaders are at home. Uh, was it are at home against uh, at Kamtoy against uh, St Joseph's? Uh, uh, Nairobi's team is away to Eldoret Youth, a team that. I call it a giant slay, it never respects any opponent, especially at home. And then, of course, Kisumu Ulsters uh, are away at Tika United. So uh, we have to remember that uh, uh, during uh, the, last, the last final stretch, usually it's more mental. So you have to be prepared mentally. It's, it's, it's not about tactics anymore. It's about are you going to be composed and how you will deliver. Because I think tomorrow anybody who makes a mistake is out of the chase. Of course, you're going to share that particular mic with Osoro Robert because his uh, cutters of the blazer he's putting on is ruined. <laughs> Osoro Robert, there has been concerns with regards to administrators of Kenyan Premier League for not doing much to ensure that KPL has got that oomph and spice it needs. Do you think that's a, a challenge now to uh, them cutters of National Super League and the level of competition that has been witnessed, the crowds in terms of fan attendance? I think uh, National Super League sides are getting more of the crowd attendance as because most of their matches are not in Nairobi. They are actually at home. You look at Kisumu All-Stars, they are playing most of their matches in Kisumu. We have got Eldoret Youth. You have got St. Joseph. St. Joseph comes from Isibania. Uh, Serare, that, that's where they're coming from. You've got Shabana, who was formerly at the Kenya Premier League, also attracting crowds from Western. You've got the likes of Green Commando. So that community level of commitment from the club and the community and the people around the communities why they're having those kind of funds for the kenya premier league it's all about most of the crowd most of them being commercial entities that are actually most of them based here in nairobi you can argue some are corporate social responsibilities for some of the biggest companies here in town and that's what they do they don't go that extra mile to build them to be the clubs that they are supposed to be at the level of the kenyan premier league for the Kenya Premier League itself, you can say, and people will agree with you, that they have not done much as what they can do. Because a club like Gormaya, which has a wage bill of, I think, 5.2 million a month, you're playing 30 or so matches a season, you're playing 40 or so matches a season, com considering all the competitions you're in in the CAF Champions League, you go to the CAF Confederations Cup, you are playing at home in the Kenyan Premier League in the Go TV Shield, now the Sport Pesa Cup. You are playing in other competitions. And then you have spent over 100 million in a season. Then at the end of the season, you are winning a trophy worth 4 million. That's a question that someone will be like, you should be getting more money than the money you have spent in a season. Also, this money can help you build, but for 4 million, that's just money for one month. That's just one month wage bill for this club. So for the Kenyan Premier League, they have to go an extra mile to get sponsors who can come in and help them. We understand they cannot do it alone. That one, we got it correct and precise that the Kenyan Premier League cannot get the money that they can have to help these teams out. But at the end of the day, they need to do much better so that these clubs can have something. They can something that they can go home with. Let's say if you win a trophy, you're 100% sure the money that is coming with this trophy is really going to help the club. And talking about the sponsorship, of course we've seen several teams crying foul with regards to the kind of financial support they have received from even county administration. Viga United, as we speak, they have been relegated and I've spoken to several people associated with the team. They say that, you know, they, uh, you know, awful uh, support from the Viga County government has also contributed to their poor performance, hence, you know, relegation. And from that aspect, do you think Kisumu all has uh, gained much needed support from Kisumu County government and going forward, do they, you know, uh, seek to continue with the same? I think, I think it's, uh, one thing I have to say is it's an amazing precedent that has been set by the likes of Vega County and Kisumu County governments that are coming in and supporting something from their county for their county. Yes. That is something for their community. 
And I think uh, one of the most amazing things is about Kisumu All Stars is they chose a sponsor that operates within their county in Royal Dental that are con sponsoring the team with the with the Kisumu County government. So I think it's 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 a wake up call to to many clubs out there because if if your county has a team, you don't need to rely of uh, upon sponsors in Nairobi. You can took, take two or three sponsors and you'll be marketing your own businesses in your county in your area of operation. So uh, the other thing I'll have to say about uh, county sponsorship is uh, football and politics really uh, can't mix uh, because uh, the instability that exists in, in, in politics is too much for football to handle. And it has happened. Uh, months uh, have gone without players receiving their salaries because maybe the, the county, the national government has not disbursed money to the county governments. So the, it reaches a point where the, a county really is just helpless. And that's why you need co-sponsorships among, among uh, the teams. You need to have at least one or two sponsors out there. But there has been, you know, also condemnation with regards to officiating in National Super League with others saying that biased officiating has been witnessed and some teams, you know, getting much preference and getting favor favored in terms of picking three maximum points. I don't know, have you witnessed such situations in your coverage of the same? Yeah, I would, uh, I'd be careful to say I've witnessed or otherwise. What I'd say is... Uh, Just raise up your mic. Uh, what I'd say is, uh, to some extent, and many people have complained. To some extent, there's been a bit of uh, funny or shoddy officiating uh, in, a, in a league as high as, you know, this is the second trial league. Yes. And some of these officiators, or some of these referees, by the way, actually officiate in the KPR. So for, I think it's, 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 it's a wake-up call even to the, 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 the federation and its, its, its referees to ensure that there is, there is uh, quality delivery out there. Because remember, uh, if a, a referee decides a match uh, based on just some funny, you know, thoughts, it can actually cost a team. Yes. So we need to be serious when it comes to the element of officiating. It's, it's one of the things, I think, to in this day and age where it's killing football. When you look at the level of officiating here and maybe abroad, there's quite a big gulf. Yet, I think this, these referees are all trained with FIFA catalogs or FIFA manuals. So I don't understand why, for example, maybe because of... Uh, but, but do you think the same is also attributed to the low pay or lack of pay completely? Uh, I, 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 I believe so, because some of these referees, there's a point where for months they are not being paid. So maybe uh, some might, might think uh, maybe they were, uh, they were coerced, maybe paid, but I, I can't say I have evidence. But... This is also a challenge to the federation. You pay your employees, and then they'll deliver the maximum. But it's 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 not to say that the the referees, even if you're not paid, you 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 signed an oath to do the best. If you can't do the best, then I don't understand why you're a referee in a big league like the National Super League. Also, oh, Robert, standard officiating and lack of the same in Kenyan football. Do you think even has led to match fixing that has been witnessed? Several players being the culprits of the monster. I, I think. People have got to understand also the mechanisms of how these people are paid. You realize that in the Kenyan Premier League, of all the sponsorship money they get, they, how do they disburse this money? You know, people usually forget that the money is only for the players or the money is only that is being disbursed to the clubs. Remember, they also have to pay the referees. Like the Kenya Premier League has to pay the referees. They have to train the referees. I think it's up to last season when the Football Kenya Federation pulled the referees to the the. FKF Federation right now that the Federation now deals with the referees at the end of the day. But these referees also, you have to pay them. There's no way you can deal with that. A referee cannot go 10 matches without being paid. And this is not only a Kenyan problem. If a referee is in Togo and has not been paid for 10 matches, be sure that in the 11th match he has to do something to get that money. And most of these referees are not in high-end paying jobs. These are just your normal school teachers, just your normal nurses, just your normal anybody outside there that has a chance to go and referee these games. But then they have to be put in a pedestal where they understand that what you are doing is for the betterment of the game, not just us as referees getting this money, but for the betterment and the future of the game. That is just something that has got to be instilled in them.
and for it to have a standard officiating that can help the country. Of course, if you're just tuning in right now, this is the touchline on Y254. We're dissecting National Super League coming to an end tomorrow. The second tier of Kenyan football with several teams chasing for the overall crown. Wazito FC, Kisumu All-Stars alongside Nairobi team all looking forward to be crowned champions in tomorrow's culmination and of course get promoted to the Kenyan Premier League, which is the main tier. And of course, we as we speak about that, so official green commanders of Kakamega Homeboy Sticker United alongside Migori Youth have been relegated and the three up there was Ito, Nairobi team and Kisumu All Stars chasing for uh, top crown and get promoted to Kenyan Premier League. But let's also talk about the aspect of whoever helped the team to get promoted and whether they get retained. Because we've witnessed scenarios where, like KCB, they were promoted and most of the players who contrib immensely contributed towards uh, their breakthrough now being asked. Uh, Can we witness the same situation with Kizumu All Stars in case <laughs> they win all, the second tier and get promoted to? First of all, I hope nothing like that happens because uh, the reason I'm saying uh, I maintain this is a historic run is uh, also because of uh, the, the the team itself, the way it's set up. We have a very young team manager in Alfredo Guko. He's a very young man. He's taken the team from last season where the team was really doing badly. He structured the team and now he's in the, on the brink of bringing the team to the Kenya Premier League. So I think uh, the notion whereby uh, you have to rely on old guards or other, other football stakeholders or the big guys, I think that is what is hurting our football. Because at the end of the day, these are people who really have worked. The players trust in them, they, the players like them, they understand them. He's been there motivating the players. So I, do, I, I will be very shocked if Kisumu will, uh, will stoop to, to such laws. Uh, that being said, uh, uh, joining the Kenya Premier League, I must admit, is a, is a different ball game altogether. So I, I really expect there to be added support. Maybe they'll bring in a few guys in terms of strategy, to, a, a strategic move and experience. Mm -hmm. But really firing the people who really did the work will be very unfortunate. I've got a question for Barry because he's the one who has covered the NSL more than any of us here in the table. The question will be, how tough is it in the NSL? Because I remember Ushuru came to the Kenyan Premier League, played for, I think, two seasons, and then were relegated. For the better part of the last five years, Ushuru has been fighting for the number three position. Number, they have never gone past that. Thika United, they came, they were in the league for a very good run, I think 10 years. The moment they were relegated to the NSL, they are still going further down. They are not coming up. KCB went back, came up. How tough is it to play in the NSL for these clubs? Oh, to answer you, sir, I'd say this. Uh, NSL, first of all, like any other football uh, tire, mm -hmm. you need a lot of investment. And that means investment in uh, good players and investment in a good technical uh, bench. The reason why uh, some of these teams struggle is because when they're in the Kenya Premier League and then they drop down to the NSL. Mm -hmm. Most of them look, lose like a, a half of, or a huge chunk of the players uh -huh. who have ambition yeah. to still play in the Kenya Premier League. Mm -hmm. and, and, and therefore, when they go back to, to, to the National Super League, it's a bit of a struggle. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a push and pull. Yes. So, so that, that, that is one of, the, one of the issues. Another issue is uh, maybe motivation. Uh, National Super League, I believe, is one of those leagues that over half of the teams uh, um, uh, don't have sponsorship money. Yes. And remember, the National Super League itself doesn't have sponsorship. The only sponsorship I think it had was with uh, with one of the broadcasters. Oh, um, oh, yeah, oh. yeah, broadcast rights. Yes. But beyond that, I think there are very few teams who have sponsorship packages, mm -hmm. and that means you will have a case where some teams will will probably uh, even give um, walkovers because logistics they can travel they can and stuff. It. Yeah. So. This has also helped uh, destroy uh, teams, let's say like uh, Tika United. Tika United had a sponsor, the sponsor went away. Yes. Now they have to struggle. They've gone down, now they're going even deeper. Yes. Uh, for a team like Ushuru, uh, I think the biggest challenge has been uh, probably replicating the whatever they had in the Kenya Premier League to this league. And remember in the National Super League, it's not straightforward. Everybody's fighting for points. Yes. If you're going to come with a, with an attitude that we are the big boys here and everything, unless you're a Zito, for example, who invested heavily yes. across the board, mm -hmm. then I, I think it's going to be difficult. Anybody who gets relegated from the KPL to come this side, it's not going to be obvious. 
that yeah. you come back to the national super league and yeah. ushuru's main and doing there yeah. has also been this talk that there is one man mm. uh, who puts on so many hats at ushuru is yeah. the chairman is yeah. the coach is mm. the secretary general mm. do you think that has also undermined their performance considering they have a concrete sponsor in kare yeah yeah so uh, what happened just the other day i think it came rather late was that kare who owns ushuru they have now uh, put in a, a new chairman directly who works with kare i think it's the commission of domestic taxes or something and now also the coach that we have currently is now on performance contract so going forward we are expecting uh, this might have come late but going forward we are expecting ushuru to 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 deliver on on the target when I mean, the target obviously is going to the kenya premier league and uh, for 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 what you're saying about one person carrying many hats i think it's important in this league to have uh, what do you call uh, specialization specialization if you're the head coach you have an assistant do your job yeah. Tec technical yeah yeah technical coach. manager do your job uh, and everybody has to do the job if if you're going to do everything i think there'll be a mess up and then maybe you'll even clash with your own players because you want to do just about everything uh, and i think that's that's the way to go in a professionally run league for example i'd like to use the the example of was it was it of like in the bench like seven guys they even a physio a tm a coach and technical director and assistant but now if if a team has one person doing everything it's obviously going to be a challenge yeah. was it when they coming on board of ricardo don rico as you know the overall club president and now they are on their way to kenyan premier league football of course whether they win the national super league or not they are obviously getting promoted do you think they are the PSG Kenyan version of the French money backs Paris and Germain or probably Manchester City because we witnessed the same situation with the two when they came into limelight uh, I, I think Ricardo has taught Kenyan stakeholders one thing if you are going to own a club you need money you are not going to own a club because of a name you are not going to come here and say I'm the chairman of Wazito FC when you don't have money to back you up because at the end of the day before was it a breaks even to start making its own money to be professional enough to make its own money and operational costs are coming from was it fc as a company there has to be some level of investment and this investment is coming in from ricardo ricardo is not just saying that i'm throwing you money and at the end of the day i want you to just win the trophy ricardo is just telling people that i'm putting my money in Wazito. And after five years, after 10 years, I need to see my investment. How is it going and what kind of returns I'm expecting? He's coming. He's bought them a team bus. Many teams don't have buses. He's bought them a team bus. He's, he's coming building. with broadcast rights. He's uh, his, his own TV station that Wazito is using right now. Next season, you'll see a very different kind of contract negotiations between Wazito and the Kenyan Premier League because yes. they can manage to produce their games. Yes. You realize and that? So these kind of games, how are they going to help them going forward? How are their players' image rights being sold outside there? And then again, is coming, is going to buy good players that can push Wazito to another level because now you're having players who are in the NSL, you have the young kid like Masika who made it to Chan, but when you come to the Kenyan Premier League, you need experienced players. Yes. What kind of players that Wazito is going to bring in? So he is going to invest in that those kind of players. And the moment they come to the Kenyan Premier League and play well and stay in the Kenyan Premier League, their return on investment has to come back. Yes. And, and that's what they are fighting for. And just, just to add on uh, to his point is, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll revisit your earlier point where you said uh, most of the clubs here in Kenya are doing it as a CSR. Yes. And Wazito have identified this is a business. Yeah. Football at the end of the day is a business. Mm -hmm. When you look at Europe, all, all the investments that are being made like the, by the Etihad group, by the people on PSG, it's, 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 a, it's a business transaction. So that is the difference. When you do it as a C CSR, there's a level of, of unseriousness that you yes. take it with. So what was it has done actually, it has come and told guys, you see, we can't be able to invest in football. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy about that. That is one of the things I love about, about them. Because they even spoke about building a stadium in the coming years. Yes. No one has ever thought of that. We have uh, teams that have been winning the Kenya Premier League for years. My own, my own the team I support, Gormahia. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, so it's really a wake-up call to other, yeah. to other owners, to other... Football is a business. Mm -hmm. And it can be scalable, and it can be able to get profits. So Wazito is just saying watch and learn.
So basically, sorry, maybe just to add a bit on what Ian and Osoro was saying. Any corporate would obviously want any corporate would obviously want return on investment. Yes. But what the corporates mostly look at is one thing: accountability and structures. If a club or an organization has good structures from ground up yeah. and there's accountability, I can assure you, uh, most corporates out there are looking for organizations, organizations to invest in, and that means. Uh, the lesson here for most clubs is you must be serious, like Ian is saying, take this uh, sport or football as a business, put the structures in order, and every corporate will pour money at you. Yeah. I don't think it's, it's rocket science. Yeah. Every corporate yeah. just wants to put their money where they know the returns will be back. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you look at, you look at was it or next season, I can dare say next season with the way Wazito is going in the graph it will not be Wazito sending proposals to corporates it will be corporates sending proposals to Wazito I agree with you yeah and that's how they'll be making their money because now they have got the visibility that they want most of our our local TV stations here at home we don't have the broadcast money to offer these clubs to come on board Wazito FC and their president can do that Next season in the Kenyan Premier League, remember the Kenyan Premier League rights deal with La Liga is not money that exchanges hands. It's all about visibility. But if Wazito can dare say that we've got 20 million to give for broadcast rights, they can take those rights. And corporates will be like, we are in the online platform. Technology is moving this way. Football is moving this way. And we can make money through these people with the way they are going. And, and that's a profile and no other club has. And I think at the end of the day, is, uh, wh wh what is really happening in the football landscape is football in Kenya is evolving. Yeah. So people, there are people who are still stuck in the past. The people don't want it to evolve because uh, peop the people want the status quo to remain because that's how they benefit from it. Yes. But what Ricardo is doing is realize football is evolving throughout the world. There are online platforms. I mean, like, we have 4G internet. In the next few years, we'll have 5G internet. Everything will be, will be now online. And I think they are levering, le leveraging that. Mm -hmm. So I think what they are doing is they're, they're just evolving the game in Kenya. Gentlemen, we have to wrap it up on that particular note. But before we do your parting shot with regards to tomorrow's expectations, <laughs> Ian, starting with you, what do you look forward to? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to a very good game. Uh, I'm urging all all supporters of Kisumu All Stars to come out. Uh, let's go to Thika Stadium. Let's paint that stadium light blue. Mm -hmm. uh, let's let's make sure you come out of there with three points, and let's secure this KPL promotion because we deserve it. Uh, the the county has done a good job. The sponsors, the team management, the coaches, and now it's up to us. Let us go there. Let us be the twelfth man on that pitch tomorrow. And I'm l I'm really looking forward to an emphatic win. Governor, Professor himself, will he come through to support the boys and give them much needed motivation? I hope he does. B what I know is uh, our CEC for Sports Archie will be there tomorrow to support the team. And uh, the team are right now are very motivated. They are ready to play. They are in a good state mentally. Uh, the game in midweek saw them play uh, under a huge crowd, one of the biggest crowds ever in Kisumu in terms of NSL. So the, the boys right now are very pumped. And it was very evident by their performance. They even said it after the game, how much the fans influenced their performance. And tomorrow is going to be huge. Uh, thank you for the Gormaya supporters who will come down tomorrow. <laughs> we'll need that. We'll need that. Yes. But which game now will you be covering? Because uh, it seems that uh, you might be in dilemma to exercise choice yeah, on yeah, which yeah, clash to cover. Yeah, for, for starters, I'll be a neutral, so may the best team win. <laughs> uh, and number two, I think uh, we will be keeping tabs on all games. You remember all games are starting at 1400 hours, 2 p.m., all of them. So my ears will be in Eldoret, my ears will be in Thick, and my ears obviously will be at Camto. Uh, but apart from that, as I finish, I'd like to say uh, the race, even for the Golden Boot, if there's such a thing, is very tight. Remember, uh, Dennis Oalo was formerly at Kisumu Monsters, now it's at Nairobi's team with 21 goals. And uh, we have at 19 goals Steven Onyango for Chunsako, their team is 13th. And then wow. uh, Bran Yahama with 18 goals. So tomorrow, we might see something else. Uh, we, 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 that I, I've never seen a situation where Apart from the league being tight, the, the golden boot is so tight and uh, it's going to be interesting tomorrow, yeah. Yes.
Wow, fantastic conversation. It's been reviewing National Super League coming to a close tomorrow. Kwazita FC, Kisumu All-Stars and Nairobi Steamer all chasing for title crown. And we're going to be keeping an eye on that particular development and see how that pans out. Touchline is the show. Y25 is the channel. Wasike Maxwell is my name. Osoro Robert is my co-host. And he did something nice with KFWA, Kenya Footballers Welfare Association, and in particular with their president and... Uh, He's not a former international. He still plays with Madara United, actually. He's former defender for the national team. But he will say he's still the defender for the national team. In case he's given a call up, he will uh, sparkle. That is James Situma. Let's listen in to what he said with regards to pushing for the welfare and concerns of players.